Hello, welcome to this ultimate guide of Ghosts of Tabor. In this guide, we're going to cover the very basics from buying the game, what DLC should you get, should you get any, how to play the game just from the bare basics from guns, looting, food, drinks, things like that. By the game, you've got a couple of options. First of all, you can buy it in Steam, which is what I did because I've got a game in PC. You can also buy it through the Meta Store if you just have a quest and you don't have a game in PC. If you buy it through the Meta Store, also have the option to download it on your PC through the Meta app. You've got that cross-buy option there. For me, I personally just went with the Steam edition um, because at the time I didn't know about the cross, uh, the cross buy, cross play kind of thing. Now, if you buy on Steam version, obviously you can still play with Quest Player, so don't worry about that. There's also DLC that the game offers, so I'm just going to show you on Steam exactly the same on the Meta Store. So you've got Nuclear Night Edition, Join or Die Edition, Air Package Edition. And they've also got two other DLCs. So let me just open these two. So we've got the Ubu pack, which comes with basically a few skins, Alton mask and backpack. Scroll down here. So they're not weapon skins. They're entirely new guns, which you can purchase at the Merchant of Death, which I'll show you later. We've got the Terran Tactical JW3 kit as well, which comes with these. Get the MPX, the Benelli M2, Karna, Combat Master and a Glock. And like I said as well, you can purchase these through the Merchant of Death. I'll pop on the screen now what the different editions are. We ignore the Independence Edition because that doesn't exist anymore. You can only purchase one of these. These do not stack, so you can't buy all three. Personally for me, I bought Nuclear Night Edition just because I play the game quite a lot. Nuclear Night Edition, you get 200,000 Corona, which is the currency, in-game currency. So you'll get an additional... You'll get a total of 400,000 because you start with 200,000. Enough powder shells to make uh, rounds. You get stun grenades, you get tier 2, tier 3 armor. You get some backpacks, you get some guns as well. And then going down, you get a little bit less. So if you want to make use of this, then feel free. You also get additional things. Level 2 in-game traders for the Nuclear Night Edition. You get custom gun skin on an M4. For the Die Edition, you get Intel Room. Care package edition, you get a second gun room. If you buy the nuclear night edition, you get everything in here plus what's on this list. Same for this. Any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Okay, so first things first, if you're using a Quest 3, what you will want to do is you want to open the Steam VR menu, you want to go to controllers, manage controller bindings, you'll be set on default. Switch that to custom. You want to choose a custom binding. What it will do is it will load official bindings or community bindings. What you want to do is scroll down till you find one called Hold X for Menu. Mine won't show here because I've already got it. Once you've installed that, then once you head back to the game, hold the X button on your left controller, you'll be able to open the menu. Now we can move on to the settings. We can go to Height Calibration. I would say maybe do this every time you start the game. If you play seated, select seated. If you press automatically, let's do this. So to reapply, what you want to do is you want to look over to the left. There'll be a little head with green glasses on. You want to make sure that your eyes kind of level up with that. If it doesn't, then go to manual and change this height. For some reason, I think some three foot 11. Well, I'm clearly not. Seated, you can press apply and then you can press the left analog stick down and your player will crouch. What you can also do is if you're standing up press automatically there will be a red object below you if you bend down and then reach out and press the grab button which is the kind of where your middle finger is you can if you can pick that up then you're okay press okay screen calibration calibrate this set this to whatever device you're using so we've got gun stock calibration this here is if your guns aren't holding kind of the way you want them to be held, or if they're going all over the place, then you calibrate it here. Use physical gun stock. Um, we won't do that. We're going to use the virtual gun stock. So, if I show you what that means, when you pick up a gun that has a stock, let's load a mag in, your stock will hit your shoulder when you grab the gun. It will be less, it will, it will move around less. We can pick it up. Aim it like that. Now, if I go to settings, turn it off. 
I disable it, apply, zoom, we pick up the gun. You can see now it is so much wobblier and I can also put it literally inside myself like that. Aim's not the best. So, I'm going to turn that back on and I would advise you do as well. Hold crouch to open the menu, you can enable that. Show compass, that is entirely up to you, so you will have um, a compass at the top of your screen. You won't see it on this video because I've got that turned off in the streamer settings. Player body, leave that on. Dominant hand, set that to left or right depending on yourself. Movement hand, left or right, so that'll be the analog stick on the left controller which does my movements. Hold to grip, that's personal preference. So I have that enabled or you can have it disabled so you tap. Show grip and trigger icons, this is also up to you. What this means, if I go back, when you walk up to something, you will see either a G or a T. T for trigger, G for grip. If I hold my hand here, it will come up with a G. If I hold G, which is the grip, then I'm now gripping the rifle. If I want to pull this back, it's with trigger. Graphics. Um... Depending on your PC or your Quest, I don't think I'm not sure if Quest has this menu. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Cause I've never played on Quest, but PC, um, depending on your PC, you can set the settings here. The audio, you can set this. I would advise you set your microphone as muted. This just means every game you'll go into, you'll automatically be speaking. And what you can do is, if you set it to muted, when you go into a game, if you hold your left arm up, you'll see a red dot here. If you hold your right hand to your mouth and press A, it will go green. This means people can hear you. That's how you toggle on and off to speak in-game. If I head back to settings here, go back to controls, you can see there's the controls for the Quest 3 controllers. Now, if I go back to game, there are some other settings that I would advise you change. Movement orientation, so you've got headset and controller. I would advise doing headset. So if you push forward on the um, on the analog stick and then turn, you will walk in that direction. I would advise you set that depending on what you prefer, but I and most people prefer using headset. Turn mode, I prefer smooth, so with the right analog stick, you can also turn without needing to kind of move your head. You can also set the smooth turning speed for that as well. Grip threshold, so that if you've got the hold for grip enabled, this just means how much you need to press that button for it to register. So you can actually have it really low or really high. Same for grip release. Hand pitch rotation offset. This one will be set at zero when you first get the game. Now, this one is completely up to you if you want to change. So I head back to the Glock and pick this up and grip it. When I pick my hand up, sometimes it might be off a little. Now, for you, the POV of the camera is slightly off, but for me, when I'm picking this up, my um, iron sights are perfectly aligned every time I'm picking this up. Now, have a play around specifically with iron sights. Change this setting. Go to the tutorial to change these settings. I like to have mine on plus seven degrees. Same for the turning dead zone, change that as well. You can also change these, but I've kept them as they are. Now, if you have shaky hands especially myself turn on hand motion smoothing because if i turn it off i've got quite shaky hands as you can see when i'm gripping my hands are shaking all over the place especially in one-on-one -on -one situations when the adrenaline is pumping you'll shake even more i advise turning that on you can see here my hands are already shaking sometimes as well the tracking can play up and that will shake even more definitely turn that on you can already see how smooth it is janky aim fix turn that on as well now that i pick this up i load a magazine now it's perfect Okay, let's move on to guns. We'll start with the pistols. Let me reset the targets here. Now, pistols, pick up your right hand or your left hand, whatever one you are dominant with. Pick up a ammo mag with trigger, slide it in and cock the pistol back. You can see there the bullet loaded into the chamber. If you pick up a gun off the floor, you pull the slide back and you see the bullet right there, that means it's chambered. If you pull it back, you'll lose that bullet. So be wary of that. I grip with my left hand, aim down the sights so I can see the middle. So I want to align the far iron sights with the two near. Find the far end and then pull the trigger. 
To drop the mag, what you want to do is press the B button on your right hand and the mag will fall out. Alternatively, you can also press the trigger button on your left hand to release the magazine. Don't forget, when there's already a bullet in the, in the chamber, you do not need to pop the slide again. Now that I haven't got any bullets anymore, and I pull a mag out, I put another magazine in, I will then have to recock the gun like I just did there. As you can see, there's a bullet in the chamber. Now, obviously you're going to be less accurate if you're holding the gun with one hand. Sometimes you might hit it, sometimes you might not. When you first start, your aim will be atrocious. AKs, similar story. So pick up a mag with T, trigger button, load it in there, pull the slide back. Press G to grip. Aim down the sights, find the near and far iron sights. Now, there's different types of loot boxes in the game. We've got ammo crates. To open ammo crates, you hold grip on any hand and you pull up. You'll find your different ammo types in here. If I open this lid a bit further, grab an ammo box here. You can see the type of ammo. The red sticker means it's FMJ. You'll see there it says full metal jacket. Red is the kind of standard ammo. And then you've got green here. Oh, yep, green, which says tracer. And it also has the ammo type there. So open the ammo box with your left hand, hold G, and you can slide out. You can then pick out the individual bullets, or you can tip it upside down and press trigger with the right finger to dump all of the bullets out. To open crates, hold G on any hand or both. Or oh, no, not both actually. One at a time, you lift up. Item crates will have various items in it. Crates like these tend to spawn guns, not all the time. Pick it up. Now, tip about looted guns. They are never cocked. So, pull the slide back. They will always have a full magazine. They will always have FMJ ammo as well. Slide it in. Now I don't need to recock it because I've already cocked it. If I slide it back, you'll see a bullet right there in the chamber. Grip at the front, aim down, like that. Get back in there. Bigger crates like these tend to spawn armor and bags. Such. Put a bag on, simply lean down, grab it, and then Place it probably where your collarbone is and it will go onto your bag. Take it off, it's exactly the same. You can do this with both left and right hands. We've also got green crates. These can come in various shapes and sizes. Lift them up. Sometimes they have nothing in. Got med boxes. These spawn all over the map. To open them, just simply grab the handle and you'll get two items. So you get an NRS or a stim and a bandage. So... A bandage would be when you're bleeding. To find out if you're bleeding, you look at your watch on your left or right wrist, depending on what hand is dominant. And um, whatever hand is dominant, it'll always be the opposite. And in the middle of the watch, there'll be a bleeding icon. Now, to stop the bleeding, you'll need to grab a bandage. Grab a bandage with grip and then hold the trigger button and wrap it round your arm. That's it. You've now bandaged yourself and the bleeding will stop. For a specific amount of time, I think it's about 10 to 30 seconds. You won't be able to use a stim in order to replenish your health. Replenish your health, grab a stim, and then you hit it into your arm. You'll only be able to do that if you've lost health. Bigger bags such as this hold a lot more items. This bag can also hold a weapon in the back. Move on to food. So we've got bars and cans to replenish your health. Just pick it up and hold it to your mouth and your health which is the green bar there will go up same with cans grip and then use a the trigger button to lift the lid off you can hold these to your mouth or you can pick up a spoon and spoon it like this eating food reduces your hydration so make sure to stay hydrated they'll have an indicator on how much liquid is left in the bottle pick up a bottle use trigger take off the lid and just hold it to your face. As you can see, your hydration levels just went up. Cans like these only add stamina. These do not add hydration. Stamina is your yellow icon on your watch. Let's look at ammunition. Firstly, 
we'll find a magazine. We've got an empty one here. Here's an ammo loader. So, chuck a mag in it. It will tell us what ammo type we need to put into the magazine. So we need 5.56 times 45. So here are our three ammo types, and this is an ammunition kind of makeup machine. To make ammunition, we need brass and powder. So we've got the three types of powder here. So we've got ST for standard, which is FMJ. We've got green, which is tracer. We don't want that because we don't want anyone to see our bullets. We've got AP for armor penetration. AP is the best. If you see this, pick this up. We've got brass here, which can come in containers or it can come in individual kind of uh, shell casings. So first of all, let's pour brass into the machine. You can see the dial going up there as well. There's also an indicator on the side here. So we've just used all the brass. There's an indicator on the side here of how much um, powder is in. Grab the top with T, pour the powder in. Like that away. So we need 5.56 by 45. So let's select that on here. So 556 by 45, and then the ammo type is AP. Quantity 1. Required materials, it says there, one casing, five gunpowder to make one box. So we pull the lever here, it will then make us a box. Like I said, so it says uh, ammo it is, open it up. You can pick up in each individual bullet, or you can pour it in if you press the trigger button. So I'll leave the box there. Now it says we got 50 bullets, but obviously this mag can only hold 29 or 30. We'll press load. So yep, it's taken 30. So we've got 20 left. We take the if we take the mag out, so you can see that it's got the black tips. To find out how much ammo we have in a mag when we loot someone or pick it up from the ground, or you just find a mag, if you shake it, whatever hand the magazine is, it will vibrate. So three times usually means it's got about 70% or more of the cartridge filled. It will shake twice for about 50% or less, and it will shake once for about 30% or less. A trick that they do not teach you in this tutorial is if you place the ammunition box back on the loader, you can then load the ammunition back into the uh, ammo box, as you can see. They do not teach you in a tutorial. So now let's move on to Phoenix. Phoenix are the AI in the game. They'll be all over the map. If they see you, they'll start shooting at you and they can kill you. If by any chance you do not have any weapons, such as myself, you can walk up behind them, you will use the grips, you will hold grip and trigger, and then you will pull alternative angles, basically snap their neck. So if we walk up to this lovely man, we grab his head and we pull, he will die. Now, Phoenix will always drop a weapon and three mags. Now, the magazines might look empty. However, if I pick a magazine up and shake it, it's got three shakes, which means it's most likely full or nearly full. If we pick up his gun, cock it back, nine times out of ten, the guns will always be pre-cocked. So just beware of that. Remember, don't pull it back or you lose that bullet. Now we've got armor and weapons. We can pick up the M4 here. We can insert a magazine. As you can see, if I shake it, three, which means it's full. Put it in the gun and we'll charge it. So the charging handle on M4 is at the back. Pull it, that will load it. To attach attachments, pick up something like a laser and just put it near the rail and then you can slide along where you want it to go on. Same for sights, put it on and there you go. If I aim in, you should be able to see there. To take off sights, hover at your hand, it will say grab and trigger, press them together and pull off. In order to put your gun on your body, look down and press and let go around your waist level and it will attach it there. To take it off, just grab it again. Armor, to grab it, just hold it and put it around your stomach area and let go. Your head, put it literally on your head and let go. That's it. Still got the backpack on, don't forget as well. Grenades, you pick up a grenade, pull the pin out with trigger. You can hold the grenade for as long as possible, it will not go off. As soon as you let go of the grip 
on whatever hand is holding the grenade, that is when it will explode. For example, smoke grenades, they're not used that often, but are handy when you need them. Night vision goggles, so if I take my helmet off, you see this has a mount. Put it on, just release. To put night vision goggles on, as in to turn them on, put your hand up, press trigger, and flip down. Same goes to the reverse. Hit trigger, flip up. We've got some attachments here. So to take our vest off, grab and trigger at the same time on your vest. Pick up the attachment and hold it to your vest. Then you can then slide along where you want to put it on the vest. This one here is a knife holder. So you can put throwing knives in that. Magazines, so if I want to put them in, just hold them up to the pouch, let go. And they'll go in. If you've just run out of ammunition on this magazine, you can grab a trigger with T from your holder. Whilst holding trigger, go up to this mag and press grip. You will then take this off and hold the other mag, which then allows you to do a quick swap. The other side of this wall is a bad guy. We need to kill him. Now we've got a laser sight on here. Whilst holding the gun with your left hand, click trigger and that will turn on the laser sight. You click it again, it will go into infrared mode, which can only be seen in night vision press it again turn it off don't forget enemy players like real life people can see your laser so going around a corner will give your position away if you have that on let's go okay welcome to the bunker when you first load up into the game you will have the following rooms available to you you'll have storage armory kitchen trade room vault and bed power so, let's start off with storage. You start off with level 1. When you open this, you'll get a, a bench here with some stims and some bandages, and then you'll have some shelving here. This is your basic storage setup. Once you upgrade, which I'll show you how to do later, you'll have storage level 2, which you get much more storage. Now you have trade room. So, in trade room, this is where you can collect items that you've bought from the vendors, and here's where you sell items. You also get a little bit of storage here for vests, hats, guns, ammunition, pistols, etc. To sell an item, what you do is pick up any item that you wish, drop it on the belt, it will go through, and then it will come up here. Do not press sell all. I repeat, do not press sell all. It might be tempting when you've got lots of items in here, but if you sell to an individual trader, you will get more for your money. As you can see here, if I press sell all now, I would get 251 corona. But if I look down the list, if I sell to Shiro Ammunition, I'll get 401. Just tap to sell. That's it. Now we've got the armory. This is where you store all of your guns, all of your ammunition. This is where you craft ammunition as well. Let's go in. So you'll start off with level 1, which will give you two mannequins to store your armor. You'll get two backpack hooks. You'll get a rack to store ammunition, grenades, things like that. And you'll get two shelves. If you upgrade to level 2, you will then get this room, which gives you three backpack wall mounts, ammunition creator, mag loader, some shelves, a table. You also get... Show, uh, drawers here you get a big one at the bottom you also get cabinets which can hold vests and at the top you can also put helmets here you have a gun rack you can put every gun you can also put um, uh, ammunition you know magazines um, anything really any, any weapons so like you put knives you can put frag grenades anything on there another mannequin uh, another like wardrobe here so I've got uh, chest rigs in there, helmet in there. Moving on to the kitchen so if we go in here we get shelves for you know water, tins, basically our food and that. Um, to refill our bottles you'll need the water filter which has the level on it and you have the tap here which you just tap and water comes out. You can buy replacement filters from the merchants which I'll show you in a bit. Now we've got power so let's go in. In this room pretty basic you've got a generator now you've got a little storage bit here for gas canisters which you can buy from the merchants you can place them there and they'll save to fill up take the lid off or your gas in this will go down quite slowly 
um, and it takes about four and a bit gas cans to get to full and this should last you mm, a little over 24 hours from full so turn it on and off just slap your hand on the red button and this is darkness and now the lights are on last but not least we've got vault and bed now come in here and we've got our vault balance all of your money stacked up here so i've got 541,000. you can walk up to the pile and grab and you'll pick up 5,000 coronas if you want to put it back you can't just put it back in the pile and it'll go up you'll have to throw it in this money deposit box launch it in there and then our money goes up now we've got the barracks this bit uh, to be fair i don't really see the point of it other than it's got two bag hangers and also it's got another wardrobe kind of thing here which you can store armor and helmets We've also got the, the shitter, um, which is, again, useless. You never really need to go in here. Um, you can also pick up this trophy, which is, I think, is the game of the year. Now, there are other rooms you can buy from the merchants, which I'm not going to cover in this video, as this is only for beginners, but you will get intel, the gun range, nursery, and also the med bay, which is uh, through that door there. Okay, so we're back at the main screen. And so this is where you will go into raids. So we've got four maps at the moment. We've got Island, Missile Silo, Matsuka, and Matsuka Underground. If you're starting off, I would definitely go with either Silo or Island. Personally, if you want to learn PvP and just go in, get guns, try to kill people, and practice your aim, definitely go Missile Silo because you'll get in and out really fast. If you want to start off with learning a map, Island would be the one to go for. It's easy to learn and you'll come across a lot of noobs like yourself um, and it's just easy to learn. Matka, uh, both of the Matka maps are normally filled with geared players um, because the, the loot there is a bit higher than what you would find on Ireland. You can select day and night for Ireland as well as other maps. You can do deployment which will put you in online mode which will be PvP VE or you can do chaining where you're loot and that's not saved. This is good to learn the map and also to go in and not have to worry about losing your gear. To add people to your contacts, you can either press the plus here or go to contacts. And you can go to request, uh, sorry, add friends, click here. It will come up with a keyboard. You can type the player's name in there. You have three people in a party. We've got missions. This is how you level up your traders. So each trader has its own missions on the side. And then they'll come in here. You can only have five active missions at once. What I would say is do the missions that have the experience. Some, when you first start out, will have zero on them. I'm not sure if mine will have zero. Not at the moment. I think I've done them already. But the ones that do give you the more experience will be harder. So just be wary of that. Okay, let's move on to the merchants. Head to the merchants, open up the menu, go to Tabor Market. When you're loaded in, You've got all the merchants that I showed earlier that you can sell to. They're all here. So, this one will obviously sell medical supplies. So you walk over to the counter and you can buy certain objects from here. You can also come on here. You can buy food, you can buy medicine and that. To buy something, you can click on it. It will add it to your basket. You can check out and you can buy. You can also insure it there. If you click the star... If you go then go back to the trader room, you will then be able to buy it from the trader room without coming here every time. So if you're buying something very frequently, do click that button. We've got Shira Ammunition, which will sell ammunition. We've got Minty Tactical, which will sell basically clothing, backpacks, armor, things like that. We've got Merchant of Death, which will sell all the DLC items, the Ubu DLC. So I can buy this here. Like I said, you can also pick stuff off the wall to try it out if you wanted to, or just to inspect it. You don't buy it if you just pick it up. To buy it, obviously you have to press that, go to checkout. Over here we have Spectre, who sells weapons and accessories. Next to Spectre, we have a tunnel, so if you head through there. We've got Merrick bunker upgrades. So here, if you come over to the little computer, you can buy bunker upgrades. So you can buy all the rooms, you can level them up, got utility. Your garden station level that up if you wanted to i'll do that now that's it they all have requirements to go to the next level as you can see here 
Then we've got Jury's Euromart, who sells kind of all sorts of stuff. Here is where you buy your gas canisters. So we go to Bunker Resources. You can buy your gas cans, your water filters, um, your seeds for your nursery as well. Jerry's also sells medicine as well as consumables. And he also sells ammo crafting. So that's it. That's the Tabor market. Last couple of bonus tips before I go. Check out the Ghost of Tabor fandom page. You can find wiki pages on everything to do with the game. Most helpful being the interactive maps. For example, island map. You can see everything on here from spawn locations, exfil locations, purple key card rooms, drops, things like that. Really good to familiarise yourself with these maps and spawn locations. Also check out the Ghost of Tabor Discord server. There's a group finder in there so you can find people to play with. Alright, I hope all this helped. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing. My goal is to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Stay tuned for more content. Thanks.